Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is Child Care Rockstar Radio, episode 168, featuring Grafton Milney. Hey folks, it's Chris Murray, your host over here at Child Care Rockstar Radio. Thanks for tuning in once again. Hope that you're having an amazing January of 2024. Again, Happy New Year. I don't know if it's too late to say that or not, but as we are still in January when this episode is going live, hope that you're having an amazing, incredible year so far. I am excited to introduce you today to Grafton Melney. He is somebody that focuses, I'm not going to say exclusively on child care industry, but has had a ton of experience in commercial real estate and finding child care owners new location sites. And this is a very, very, very important piece to your puzzle if you are in expansion mode. Grafton has recently written and released a new book called Child Care Center Success, and it's an excellent little handy tool for lots of success strategies, tips, and more of a deep dive all around how to expand successfully in the child care industry and what you need to think about, what you need to plan for, how to do your due diligence, There's some really cool little handy cash flow tools in the back, in the appendices of this book, and I'm a huge fan. So one of the things that I teach a lot over the years, I've really been known as somebody who helps you guys understand your market better and do more market analysis and how to go about simple ways to effectively understand and get clarity and insights on your market. You can't do this too much. Let me tell you, Uh, you've got to dive in and really drive the neighborhoods, uh, talk to folks, make connections and boots on the ground work guys out of your, out of your uh, home office or your corporate or your school office and really get out there and understand the nuances of your market and different streets, different neighborhoods um, can make or break your business. So we talk about that in today's episode titled know your market. And uh, some of the the tried and true techniques, we talk about planning, strategic planning, due diligence, real estate trends, commercial real estate tools that you can use to understand your market better and so much more. So I'm very, very excited to share this with you today. And and before we get started into the episode, I need to tell you real quick that I want to thank Lilio. Lilio, formerly Hi Mama, is today's podcast sponsor. And as I just mentioned, Hi Mama is now Lilio. Lilio is the number one rated all-in-one child care solution with a brand new name, supporting administrators, owners, educators, and families. Lilio provides everything you need to build a successful child care program. Learn about the Lilio story at lilio.com slash our story. Lilio, the building blocks for high quality child care. All right, so this is going to be a great little juicy episode for you. And for a handful of you, we have free books of Child Care Center Success to give away. So I would like to uh, invite you to email me at podcast at childcaresuccess.com and put in the title, send me a book and I will send you a book. I would love to hear from you if you want to share what you loved about this episode or Anything about the podcast, things that you're loving, things that you would like to suggest for future guests, any other feedback, would love to hear from you. And when you send me an email podcast at childcaresuccess.com, I will send you one of Grafton Melanie's new books, Child Care Center Success. All right, guys, let's dive in. Episode 168. Here we go. Enjoy it. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm so excited that you're here. I have a great guest queued up for you today. His name is Grafton Milney. Grafton, how are you? I'm doing awesome, Chris. How are you today? 
doing fantastic. I'm we're recording this the week before Christmas. So we're running around like little Santa's elves and being very busy over here. Same thing over where you are. Absolutely. I've got four little kids. So they're uh, the magic is real at our, at our house. We're nice. Yeah. Love that. Tell me where are you located Grafton? Yeah, I'm uh, in here in Phoenix, Arizona. So beautiful time of year for us enjoying some sunshine and uh, it's great. Awesome. And how long have you been in the field of early care and education? Yeah, kind of a wild story. So uh, we own a commercial real estate company here in Phoenix. And a number of years ago, probably 12 or 13 years ago, something like that, we had a client who had a piece of real estate that had a La Petite Academy that was a tenant in the building. And the lease was terminating, so the building was going to be vacant. So the owner reached out to us and said, hey, can you help me find a new tenant for the property? So like any good agent would, we started scouring who the best next tenant would be, and it was who the next early childhood provider might be. Started creating lists and ended up getting that building leased. And one thing led to another. People started hearing that we fell into this niche of early childhood. And it's it's been a, a fun, fun niche that we kind of fell into by happenstance. Nice. Love it. Yeah. So give us a little bit more of the highlights of your journey. What are some of the memorable moments that have gotten you here? Yeah. So I guess starting with that first client, I mean, we reached out to a number of uh, providers in our area. And so they they learned who we were, who I was. And that same owner about six months later had another early childhood building that was coming vacant that he would like to, that he wanted to sell. And so we reached out to that same list of, of providers and we ended up selling that center to a group at that particular time. And one thing led to another and we just fell into this. Uh, we've become known really as the early childhood first real estate group. And here we are. Cool. And so when you went to school, did you imagine that you would be doing what you're doing today? Or did you study for something completely different? I always find this to be a fascinating question. Yeah, no. So I, I uh, got a degree in marketing and advertising with a okay. minor in business is what it was. So I always okay. knew I wanted to do something business related. Uh, my business partner is actually my older brother. And at the time, he was in commercial real estate here in Phoenix, working with a development company. And uh, one thing led to another, I said, hey, why don't you come work with me? I'm like, sure, I'm graduating school. I'll come work with you. So this would have been 2008. We started our commercial real estate company together. And yeah, just kind of random how it's all come about. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And so you mentioned you have little kids. So tell us more about life, um, what it's like at home. Yeah. So uh, married my best friend. We've been married about 13 years or so. And we've got four kids, ages 10 down to three. They're all blondies, just like me. And uh, I always, I, I apologize to my wife almost every day, just because I'm more of a Dennis the Menace type personality, and they are all just like me. And so every day, <laughs> they're, they're doing something crazy. And uh, my wife is such a trooper for everything she puts up with. And so, yeah, we've got four young kids, and uh, they have us running a million miles a minute. And it's just a ton of fun. Awesome. And what is a fun fact that you'd like to share with the audience that not that many people know about you? Oh, I, I'm a pretty open book, but I would say maybe something you don't know. Uh, let's see. I, I, I've always loved Scotland, and I actually was able to do a bucket list trip with my wife this summer. We went to Scotland and Ireland for almost two weeks, and uh, I just fell in love with, with the country, the people. And so I guess... Um, I mean, if I had a dream, I would be to learn to play the bagpipes at some time. I just think it's a ton of fun. So I don't know. I, I, I just love Scotland. Cool. Love it. I want to let everybody know to kick this conversation off that Grafton has a book that he wrote called Child Care Center Success. And how long did it take you to write this? And what inspired you to write this, Grafton? Yeah, it was a couple year process, to be honest with you. And this was uh, like many. COVID was an interesting time. Yep. And uh, I, I think in my unique role as a commercial real estate broker, I was getting a lot of questions from either existing clients or past clients that are in the early childhood field. Uh, some of it was, you know, financing related or conversations with their lender or their landlord. And it, it just got to a point where I felt like I was almost serving, you know, triage in a a business triage unit where I was just helping people on a daily basis work through different things and even simple stuff like a business plan or a marketing plan, different little things here and there. 
And I got to the point where I'm like, I need to start writing some of this stuff down. And so I did created an outline. I, I hired a, a book consultant that I've come to know through some friends who helped me through the process. And one thing led to another. And here we are. Nice. Love yeah. it. Love it. Yeah. So parts of the book really focus on the planning phase of starting a new center from scratch and then also expanding creating a marketing plan, creating, you know, strategic planning, management and operations. But, and there's a, there's a good chunk of it on due diligence. So Mm -hmm. let's dive into that because I think like one of the things that I've discovered about working with childcare leaders now for 15 years is that one of the biggest gaps that I see is that they don't do their due diligence. They don't understand how to do it or They don't have a process to follow. They don't have a, you know, any kind of a a playbook, if you will. And they don't do enough market analysis to really understand the market and the nuances of the market that they're going into. So what do you mean by due diligence? Like when you think of that, what what are you really talking about and how can people get their arms around doing the appropriate amount of due diligence. And you hit on a couple of things right there. So the first, I mean, obviously being in the field of commercial real estate, there's the real estate due diligence component to it, whether it's, you know, if you're acquiring a property or purchasing a property, there's all the building inspections, there's the uh, architectural plan review. If there's any construction component, there's a bunch of due diligence that goes into that. Whether you're getting a loan or getting financing, there's due diligence through that whole process. You mentioned market analysis. There's a, a a competitive market analysis due diligence process that you can go through to understand uh, who the competitors are that are in that submarket. Uh, what are they charging? What's their uh, enrollments like? I mean, there's all kinds of parts to due diligence, and I do talk about that in detail in the book. But really, just the takeaway is do it. You've got to do some due diligence to make sure that you're making an educated, informed decision. Right. And so do you provide um, in like the resources in the back of the book or do you have a plate, like any links where they can go to get some kind of a due diligence playbook so they can understand like what are the components of it to get more specific? Yeah. So from a real estate standpoint, we do have a standard real estate due diligence checklist that we can provide. I don't know that I have that on my website now that you say that, but we have that readily available and can get that to anybody that would find that helpful, but really it's, you're just making sure you're not missing any key component before you move forward with a potentially three, four, $5 million real estate acquisition or signing a new, in some cases, 10 or a 15 year lease that could be millions of dollars worth of rent over the time of the lease. Right. So just making sure that we're protecting our clients to make sure that they've done enough homework to make sure they're making a good decision. Mm -hmm. And do you work with anybody outside of your market area? Like, are you you just focusing on Arizona right now in terms of historically? It has been Arizona, but uh, especially with the book and other national relationships, we do have the means to go outside of Arizona. And uh, I'm the member of and a part of two national commercial real estate organizations. One's called the SIOR, and the other's called CCIM. They're really the the top tier in the commercial real estate field. And so those have opened up lots of national opportunities for me. And so whether you're in Denver or Milwaukee or Miami, we have resources to help wherever needed. Right. Awesome. So as a commercial real estate broker, when you're looking to help one of your clients with market analysis, like let's say part of my market analysis should be, I want to look at in in a specific radius area, how many child care centers there are versus estimated you know, demand. So I want to do a demand versus supply analysis in different pockets in my in these desired neighborhoods that I may want to build in or buy from. Mm-hmm. So do you use like a specific tool or set of tools to help your clients figure that out? Like how do you go about figuring that out? Yeah, some of that is just tribal knowledge, you know, knowing your specific submarket, knowing who the builders are and, you know, how many rooftops are coming in, all of that. You can't really uh, account for true tribal knowledge, but we we refer to the Buxton reports a lot. You, I'm sure you've heard of those. Uh, a lot of people use Buxton reports. Um, well, consultants like you guys that can add a lot of value in specific areas. But um, yeah, that, those are probably a couple just right out the gate that I would mention. Okay. 
Cool. So let's talk about planning and strategic planning. So another thing that owners and leaders come to us a lot for is to help them with their yearly planning and to have a framework or uh, a like a, a template for strategic planning. So talk mm -hmm. a little bit about what you've seen in the industry that you've helped people in this area. Yeah. So I'm really careful to stay in my lane. So I'm grateful for you. And I, I know we've mentioned a couple of friends that we have in common, but grateful for good organizations like you from the, the consulting role that that's really more your scope, not mine. I try to stay in my lane from a real estate standpoint, but okay. I really try to advise when you think about running a business, it's really managing your p and l. And when you look at um you know take rent or what your mortgage may be on a, on a commercial property that uh, you have your center in, I really try to advise people to make sure that uh, and you you probably know this, but keep your rent to revenue ratio between that ten and fourteen or fifteen percent. And if it gets crazy out of whack and you're your rent is 30 or 35% of your revenue and your payroll is 50% of your revenue. It's like, how are you going to yeah. keep lights on? It just doesn't make sense. Right. Right. And so I really try to advise people to engage professionals, whether it's, you know, accountants that have, you know, an expertise in the early childhood field or organizations like you, um, if you're not comfortable in that, in managing a p &L, that's fine. Get help. Right. Get, engage people that can help you. Yeah, one of the things that I really liked in your book in the was the in the appendix, the cost of care model. Yeah. I thought that was really useful, and I don't. I think that came from you and I are both partners and friends with Ron McGuckin and his team um, mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania, and that was just really really helpful because it helps you understand how to look at your financial data to understand how many children do you need to keep the lights on, essentially. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. And so that's what it's same. I mean, referring to Aran and his team to yeah. really understand that it's just so critical because at the end of the day, if you can't afford to keep the lights on, you have no means to take care of your kids, whether you're 60 or 260. Right. right? So. Right. Cool. What examples can you share about how real estate is positively or negatively impacting a child care center's success? I mean, you mentioned making sure that the cost of your real estate is not more than 12 to 15% of your yeah, 10, 10 revenue. To is, is kind of a safe general okay. area. Yeah. And, and that includes property taxes and maintenance and like everything it takes to cover your yeah, if you're Property? pushing that fifteen percent, yeah, yeah, the operating expenses is typically a separate line item. But yes, generally, right. So, what else? I mean, when you're looking for new real estate or you're looking to potentially help sell childcare center real estate, what are some other factors that come into play that will really make one either successful or not successful? Yeah, I really try to understand each each owner's um, specific curriculum. I mean. If you have a Spanish immersion Montessori program, that's totally different than say, you know, a, a preschool that's looking to enroll, you know, 30 or 40 kids close to a high uh, employment hub or something. It's it, d different strategy, right? So I really try to understand, I have a pretty specific needs criteria assessment that I take new clients through to really understand what their objectives are. But I mean, when you think of how real estate can positively impact your program, I, I, I had a client here not too long ago that did have a high-end Montessori program, private pay. And so we were really focused on a new growth, high growth part of the valley. And so partnered them with a, with a new developer who had a piece of land. And uh, we were really tracking the rooftops and where the development was all coming around it. And it's been a home run for them. And it it's really, yes, it was a destination, more of a destination location, but we really did some analytics on where the growth is going and it's just been perfect for them. Right. So I, I think it's really understanding cool. um, what your goals are and then, you know, we can kind of assist from there. Yeah. Well, I like your, it sounds like a really in-depth needs assessment analysis that you're doing with your new clients. And that's something that maybe sets you apart from other commercial real estate guys and gals. I'm not sure if anybody else is doing it to that level. So that that's very, very cool that you actually get in and you understand the nuances of 
the curriculum and how that differentiates one school from another. And is there anything else that you feel really sets you apart as a real estate professional compared to your peers that you're competing with? Well, really, it's, I mean, like in Arizona, there's 45, well, maybe, I don't know what the exact date is or date yeah. is today, but let's call it 45,000 licensed realtors in Arizona. Call it 3,500 of those are focused on commercial only. Yeah. I can count on one hand the number of commercial agents I've interacted with in my 16, 17 year career that have actually even done a childcare real estate transaction. And so having that expertise and that, I mean, now the course of my career and being in the early childhood niche, it's, I've been involved in really hundreds of early childhood transactions, whether that's you know, lease renegotiations or new lease transactions, purchase transactions, or really just the consulting role. And keep in mind, a lot cool. of these transactions didn't actually go anywhere. They didn't close or they didn't end up signing a lease. But every at bat we had, we learned something good, bad, or the other, right? And so yeah. I just think that experience has proven to be very valuable. And, you know, I'm excited to, to be a resource to others. Yeah, that's cool. So I love when you talked about the rooftop analysis and I love the, the lease negotiation piece and things that people should avoid or look for as gotchas in their leases. Um, I do think that our community is, uh, they're very heart centered owners, as you know, and so they're wonderful to work with, but sometimes they aren't, they certainly aren't negotiation sharks. Sure. Um, sometimes the opposite, right? So it's great that you're here and that myself and my coaches are here to help arm them with a little bit more, uh, that, that confidence and that ability to lease, to negotiate hard, like really stand up for yourself in a negotiation. Um, any, any stories that come to mind that where you've helped specific people, uh, really move the needle in their, in their negotiation or anything else that you want to share in terms of case studies or stories? Yeah, I don't know that anything specific jumps out, but really so many times you don't know what you don't know. I mean, just because this is what I do all day, every day, and I can understand how, how to structure a lease or what rent abatement is standard in the market, what type of tenant improvement concessions are standard in the market, or what type of annual escalations there should be on a three-year lease versus a five-year lease. I mean, those are all things right. that I do every day. Yeah. That doesn't mean that, you know, your, your everyday operator is going to really understand that. And so that's right. I mean, negotiation is an art and I, I agree with you completely that there, there is strategy to that. But I think at the end of the day, it's, I'm here to help give information and provide direction and here's what's common out there. Here's a way to approach it. And not every transaction is the same. I mean, every situation is different. Right. I mean, everybody's financial situation, everybody's experience, everything is just different. So I'm happy to add value and see what I can do to be uh, resourceful. Yeah, appreciate that. What is your favorite part about working with child care owners? You know, I mean, as a dad with four young kids, I love children. I'm passionate about kids and whatever I can do to be an influence for good. I think of... I mean, the real estate has such an impact on the day-to-day -day experience for, for these children. I want to make sure they're in a safe, happy, positive situation. And I mean, the real estate is a big part of that. And so, yes, I, you know, I'm, I'm business minded and we all have bills to pay. That's all important. But at the end of the day, I'm really proud to be involved and to help uh, providers and owners have uh, centers that they can be proud of and provide centers that their staff can be proud of. And it, it's just really fun to be involved in, in the community for sure. Yeah. Love that. So thinking back about your journey so far, um, is there a time when you would have made a difference or changed the way the course of something that you could have changed in your life? In other words, if I could have gone back and done something differently at this time in my life, I would have done X, Y, or Z. Anything come to mind? Oh man, I I like to try to live with no regrets. But <laughs> day, I mean, if I could have a conversation with my twenty year old self, I, I would yeah. just you you can't uh, overcompensate the importance of just taking care of your 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 mental health and 
surrounding yourself with good people, surrounding yourself with good influences, whether it's the media you consume, you know, what you read or music you listen to, all those things. I would just tell my 20 year old self, don't be too hard on yourself. I, I It's funny. I, I was very much an average student, student. A- average ACT score. Like I was, I was very average, but there's so much to be said about discipline and hard work and trying to treat people right that, um, yeah, I would just say stick to it and good things are to come. Yeah, love that. <laughs> so what are you reading, watching, or listening to right now that you're into that you want to share? Or another way to frame this question that sometimes we ask on the podcast is, what are one or two books that have been the most impactful for you um, that you would recommend to the listeners, to the audience? Oh, great question. I, I'm always reading or listening to something. So that's always, that's kind of a loaded question, but I would say a couple of things that have had huge impact on me. Uh, professionally, you can't really go wrong with Covey, seven, you know, the seven habits of highly effective people. That's kind of a, a gospel in the business world. In my opinion, it's kind of a every year read. Um, nice. A great book out there, How to Measure Your Life by Clayton Christensen. Is a former Harvard uh, Harvard professor that's just really helps you look at your your life mm. and um, kind of big picture, doing good to others. You know, that's a really thought provoking book that I really like. Uh, let's see, I love that show um, Limitless on Disney Plus. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, there's so many good nuggets in there of just how nice. to be, you know, how to take care of yourself. I don't know. There's a few that have really yeah. stuck to me. Yeah. Cool. Love it. That's, that's fun. I haven't heard of that second book that you mentioned. So that's, oh, yeah. That's, how, how will you measure your life? How, that's woo. That sounds powerful. Yeah. It's really good. It's deep. Um, all right, cool. Like I'm writing that one down. Cool. cool. I want to mention again, your book. So, and then you also had said, uh, so it's called child care center success, how to maximize profits and minimize mistakes. And we have a couple books to give away to listeners of the podcast, right? Yep. I think two or three. I don't know how many uh, we're yeah, giving away. We need to. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to share. Happy Woo-hoo! to share. Yeah. All right. It's a book that bonanza. Sure. Um, so yeah, we're going to select uh, three listeners of the podcast. And the way that we're going to do that is we need you guys to reach out and give us some feedback at podcast at childcaresuccess.com and send us an email. Um, and say, Hey, I'd love to get a free copy of Grafton's book. And we'll pick three people that email us at that address and, um, randomly. And, um, and if you put in there your favorite thing that you learned from this podcast episode or what you love about the podcast, you'll get extra credit to be chosen for a free book. How about that? (laughs) Yeah, you'll get the gold star. Um, and we'll announce your name as being chosen on the next episode. So again, it's podcast at childcaresuccess.com. Send me an email and looking forward to hearing from you and giving you a free book. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. That's fun. Happy to sure. Happy to. And your book is available on Amazon right? Mm-hmm. So that's yes, the, the main way that people should get a hold of it if mm-hmm. they would like to get that. Yep. Um, and I want to ask you about where you're headed for 2024. So what's on the horizon for you? Um, any new juicy stuff that you're working on? You know, I, I, I'm always, uh, my national presence continues to expand. So I, I've got some opportunities in other markets that my team is really excited about. But uh, as a company, we continue to grow. We've acquired uh, a property management company. So we have a new property management division and uh, we're doing some construction stuff. And so, yeah, we've got our hands in a lot of things that we're, we're, we're excited about. But uh, cool. yeah, I'm, I'm always opportunistic and excited about a new year. It's going to be awesome. Love that. One thing that just came to mind is just talking about market dynamics with regard to early learning um, in terms of pockets of opportunity, because I know you're based in Arizona and that's the market that you know the best in terms of Phoenix, et cetera. But if you had to pick like looking at the national map of the United States, where do you think are really the hot markets coming into 2024? Do you have a sense of, of what's hot? Yeah, a little bit of a loaded question, but I guess if I would ask, or if my answer would be, there's a lot happening in Texas. There's a lot of growth in Texas. 
Um, really anywhere in the Southwest right now, people are chasing the, the sunshine. So there, there's a lot happening here in Arizona, even Nevada, Utah. There's a lot of growth happening there. Those are probably the few that stand out right, right out the gate. But yeah, I mean, it's a lot, a lot of good things happening. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing your insights. You know, I was trying to get the the behind the secret door uh, questions there, Grafton. What have I not asked you that I should have? Anything that you want to close with? Any other tips or ideas or anything from your book that you want to share before we say goodbye? Yeah, I, we live in such a do-it-yourself society. I mean, you can find anything on Pinterest and uh, you know all these different social media platforms, all these do-it-yourself or how-to directions on, on really anything, right? From a real estate standpoint, there's just so much to it. That there's no harm in getting an expert involved. And I would even, uh, from a business standpoint, whether it's the right accountant or the right consultant or coach or you know, the, the right attorney. I mean, I know Ron and his team. There, there's just so many that know the ins and outs of the early childhood field that it's like, don't be afraid to reach out. There's plenty of great resources out there. You don't need to do it alone. And I, I've just seen and experienced too many horror stories where people have either lost their businesses or lost a lot of money when they really could have prevented it. Yeah, for sure. So thanks for sharing that. Those are important final thoughts, guys. And I want to thank you, Grafton Milney, for being on the podcast today. We really appreciate you. Um, looking forward to working with you in the future. And other than getting your book on Amazon, if you would like to share how people can learn more about you, your main website, email, or however you would like to give your info. Yeah, my main website is probably the best, menlocre.com is probably the best place, Grafton Milne, you can Google me, I'm sure you can find all of that there as well. We're on a number of social media platforms, so, um, but really appreciate you having me on. I've been a fan of yours for a long time. I've got, <laughs> all, 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 I've got you and your team. Oh, nice. Here. And so nice. I, I mentioned you in the in the back of my book as, as a guide and a resource for people, so I, I just appreciate all the good you're doing. And we've got a lot of friends in common. And so I just I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, so, we know, really do. We have a lot of friends in common and uh, thank you. Very appreciative for you as well. Thanks for being on the podcast, Grafton. And thanks everybody for tuning in to another episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio. Take care and God bless. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Grafton. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. I hope you liked this episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio. If you did, please share it with someone you know and help spread the word to your friends in our industry and on social media. Childcare business success is my passion and I'm honored to be on this journey with you. As a thank you for listening, learn more about how to grow your business and make more income with our brand new free quiz, the what's my number one income killer quiz exclusively for preschool and childcare owners. Take the quiz today at childcarequiz.com to discover what your number one income killer is and how to solve it. Take care and God bless.